So SEMA, having never been there before and hearing descriptions like whips, wheels, and women, it's something I often thought I should prioritize. But my SEMA journey didn't begin in a restoration shop, a custom shop, or even my own garage. It began here, at a buddy's place to check out his project car and to talk about something he needed my help on. Derek! There he is, Moto Man. What's going on? Welcome to Malibu, man. Good to see you. Nice crib you got here. Thank you, sir. But I came for a purpose. I want to see that buggy. Come check it out. This is not at all what I expected. Yeah? You, what, were, what were you expecting? Well, you said dune buggy. I'm thinking like a metallic orange with right. white vinyl seats. This is a little different. It's a, a little, little different take. Is that carbon fiber? It is, with a lot of carbon fiber detailing all over the car to cover the side chassis. Yeah. I did the dash and got the custom gauges made. Yeah, the whole deal. What is that up front? Oh, we've got the, this is a Ducati gas cap off a Ducati Monster, just to give a little bit of that you know, motorcycle detailing. I thought the wife doesn't let you ride motorcycles anymore. She doesn't know about this. <laughs> <laughs> And then what we got back here, it's a VW, that's it's unlike any other VW engine I've seen. Yeah, it's an 1800 uh, VW air-cooled motor, dual carburetors, motorcycle exhaust, the whole deal. This is certainly very different than a Lotus Esprit and a Lamborghini Espada. You know, I like vintage cars, but I wanted to do something a little bit more of my own, you know, and this just kind of represents a bit of my own kind of creation, if you will. You realize you have enough space to get another sports car in here. I know, but uh, you know, it's just time and money always is yeah. the case. Yeah. Yeah, and I think, of course, the wife. I've got the perfect argument you can use on her. Think about this. You're a car designer, right? Of course. Your thing is like import cars. You grew up around import cars. Right. So you need your own like exotic import cars inspiration for work. <laughs> Absolutely. It could almost be like a it's tax like write-off. An investment. And a tax write off. <laughs> tax write -off. Get a thing, save money. That's where women go that for that stuff. Okay. I'll try it. Try that angle and see if it works. So I saw this episode where you actually build a Morgan. Is that right? Oh, yeah. One of the best times of my life. And I also heard you used to build cars at BMW. Yeah, it was true? an internship in college. On the factory line, man. I was a mid -tarbeiter. Amazing. <laughs> And you're German, you learn some German. Oh, ich habe in Deutschland gewohnt. Schon, sehr gut. Sehr gut. So, I have a project coming up. Have you ever heard of the SEMA show in Las Vegas? I've never been. You think you can still build cars? Oh, yeah. I need your help. Okay, now hold on a minute. How much are you paying to here? After some fancy New York negotiations with Derek, I was able to shake out a fair deal. In exchange for working on a SEMA project, he agreed to hear me out on some of my ideas for the next Miata and I'd get all the fish tacos I can eat. So here we are. You know, we could do one vehicle for SEMA, but... That wouldn't be challenging. Yeah, what's the point? So we've jumped in the deep end. We're doing four cars this year. So, four cars. So first off, we took a gray CX-5 and we teamed up with Specialized Bicycles. So we're gonna take the graphic look of the, of the Specialized Road Bike and bring that onto the CX-5. And to top it all off, we're gonna drop in a turbo diesel Sky Active engine, so. Some more torque. Exactly. So the next car we're gonna do, we call the CX-5 Urban. And the idea with this car is take a black CX-5, and again, we're gonna lower it, put a much bigger wheel on it, like a 22-inch wheel, a lot wider, and fender extension. So the car is just gonna be like really butch and tough, very sporty. The next concept, for the time being, we call the Surf Snow. The idea here is that it's this whole kind of California dream where the idea of, of you getting up, going surfing in the morning at your favorite surf spot for a couple of hours, packing stuff up, heading up to Big Bear, and ski the rest of the day. Last but not least, we're gonna do an MX-5 race car. So basically, it's spec'd out uh, like a spec Miata race car, hard top, we're doing a special lighting system up front, really cool wheels, the whole car is just very authentic, very pure. Well man, this is the funnest part of the project, so let's head over to the fabrication room and get started. There are some days in life you say to yourself, eh, you know, nothing can surprise me. And then there are days that buddies of yours come to you and say, hey, can you come to my studio and tear apart four of my cars? I think I'm gonna like this gig. Okay. Cool. Pretty straightforward, actually. Oh, now we're breaking things. A little well, heavy, so just take care. And that's it. Back. There's a clip up front that, like, yeah, I got it. mine's stubborn. Excuse me, I just... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I got it. Oops. 
Oh yeah, okay. That's easy. Think we're good back here. Uh, no. What? We're painting this, right? Yeah. You don't want to lose chrome. Oh, you're right. Well spotted. Oh, I thought designers were detail oriented. Attention to detail. You're learning, man. This isn't a paint gun. <laughs> it's an aerosol. Okay. So spray we'll that on it there. first. Yeah. That's going to get rid of any wax or grease that's been on there for your fingers. Okay. And you already prepped this. Yeah. So what did you do for the prep? I prepped it with a sanding sponge. It's just a light sponge that etches the top of the clear coat. How's that? And then take the tack rag. This yeah. is a cloth that's sticky. So it'll pick up any lint that was left by the rag or any particles left on the surface. I can actually see some of them. Yeah. Okay, I'm done being your slave. All your cars are painted. It looks great. So now we'll bake it, and uh, then we'll demask it, take it out of here, and put it back together. Let's go build some cars. Yeah. All right, Moto Man. As I mentioned earlier, the graphic scheme of this car is really important. It's really what the whole statement of the car is, you know? So what we need to do... You used a fancy word from what I remember. Yeah, it, we call it tessellation. We're just kind of taking the surfaces of the car and giving it a more um, simple kind of folded look and giving it this kind of tessellated, stealthy quality. So what we need to do today is mock that up. So we're going to mock it up with tape. Then we come back and measure that and make patterns that we use to mask the car and then paint those patterns onto the car. Simple enough. So the basic theory is we want to use the key feature lines in the sheet metal as a foundation. We just want to do them in a more basic, stealthy way. Okay. So for example, I'm going to try and keep this fender line that's here. I'm just going to do it in a more basic, straight-edged manner and not so curved as an example. right? And then, for example, we would keep this line along here. We would run this line straight through and keep that feature line. And from that, we'd want to then start creating this triangulated look. So, and again, this is where the artisanship comes in. You have to kind of decide, okay, that could go there, and then maybe this, we have another larger triangle that comes down here, and so on, until the, the entire thing is kind of composed. Simple enough. You cool with that? Oh, I can easily do this. So I can trust you can mock this side up while I go do the other side? Oh, I've done this before. Just awesome. on a quarter scale, not on a full-size car. Okay. Okay. Cool. All right. I'll be back I'll in a little it. while. Good luck, man. All right, Moto Man, how's it going over there? You know, Derek, I, I think I've captured the spirit of what you're looking for. Really? Yeah, come over and check it out. I'm coming over. Holy sh! This isn't what we talked about, man. It's nothing like the picture. See, but you don't want this picture. This is Vegas. This is like the world stage. You need to rise above the noise. 
that this isn't going to rise above the trash can. What, what is going on? Look at this. Think about this. Do you know how many displays there are at SEMA? We, there's nothing going to be like this. No one's going to have anything like this. For good reason. But, okay, you know how the kids today love all their social networking? Right. This is going to be huge on MySpace. Show cars are more than just pretty paint jobs. They're also the bits underneath. However, some of those bits we actually get to see, like the brake calipers. But brake calipers are a use item, so you're not going to paint them, you're going to powder coat them. So to do that, we need to take them apart. And guess who's been demoted to brake duty? The first step is to separate the actual caliper itself. So I'm going to go ahead and use this ratchet. Now, true story, the last time I did a brake job was when I was in college. And that was when I had a car I absolutely loved, and I'm totally not making this up, a 1987 Mazda RX-7 Sport. So there's the caliper apart. I'm gonna pull the pads out. Let's put them in here. We've got neat little organizing bins so we can put everything back together because the reality is all these have to go back on the car. Oh, see that's why I got the motor. Now for the fun part, pulling out the piston. But that's not something I'm just gonna pull out. I have to use the air hose. And hopefully I do this right. I won't get this all over myself. So this bolt comes out off the side. Again, let's put her in a little handy-dandy bucket. My Mazda Consigliere said to cover it. I'm going to stand back here. This could go very badly. And then, oh, hey now. And boom, it's a mess, but it's cool. Let's pull out this seal. Any Mazda mechanics out there, you should probably turn this off right now. Oh, here we go, look at that. Boom! Let's put that off to the side in our trash pile. And there we have a completely ripped apart front brake caliper. Derek, check it out. Hey, man. I just finished the wheel for the Urban Monster. Wow, that looks Look great, that. huh? Uh, bit of a stupid question. What's that? The gold here? Yeah. Why do we do this? Because there's no gold in that car at all. It's bitching. Design studios are great places to come to see what's going to go on in the future. But they're also great places to come to see what went on in the past. I ditched Derek, took a look around this place. There is a vault downstairs that holds some Mazda history, like this. The 2007 Mazda Taikei show car from the Tokyo Motor Show. It didn't do much after 2007, but it did star in a movie this year. I think it was called Looper or something like that. Anyway, it's got some really cool stuff down there. A Cosmos that looks like it just came out of the wrapper, and the 1991 Le Mans winning 787, which, by the way, is coming to SEMA with us this year. We just got a special delivery from the ranch. A lot of cowhide just arrived. We've got seats front and back for CX-5s. We've got a sports seat for the MX-5, steering wheels, shift boots, and armrests. So take a look at this obviously for the MX-5, and then this is for the ski and surf car, but check this out, look at the detail. You got the, wh the white stripe here, and you got white stitching, but the armrest has the white stitching on the top, and then red stitching on the side to pick up the graphics outside the car. Now it's time to put Andy's handiwork on the car. So what we did was we painted the wheel a flat black. To pick up on the brake caliper, we painted one inset red of the same shade. But details are everything. This is a design shop. So you're not going to put an ugly lug nut on like that. You're going to get a fancy black one to match the wheel. This is a very awkward position. <laughs> Thank you. 
Okay, now that we've got the whips part taken care of, let's go wheels up to Vegas and check out the other thing that SEMA is famous for. So, now that the show's almost over, how about we go back to my place for some Oreos and milk? Look at that good looking kid there. I thought you said you were gonna give me hair. No budget for After Effects? What's up? <laughs> you got the... <laughs> you know, Motor Man, I was a little nervous at the beginning of this project. Nervous about what? You know, new guys in the studio, you don't know what their skills are. I built a Morgan. But I gotta say, man, you pulled it off, you know? You helped us tear the car down. Which was fun. I know. They put the components on, paint the car, get it back together. And you are always welcome back to our studio. I'm very glad you said that. I think we need to start talking about our next project. All right. Let's talk Miatas. Oh, yes, my now, favorite. Now, Miatas. We've got to get away from this retro thing. we got to talk new, bold. we got to slap people in the face. So a little bit behind the scenes here. If you've been following the show, you know we've already built a show car. Now, while I didn't expect that experience to go exactly to plan, the last couple of days were incredibly stressful. So much so, we barely got that car to the Detroit Auto Show on time. Now, it would stand to reason, with a project that has four times the amount of work, the experience would be pretty much the same. But I gotta take my hat off to the guys at Mazda Design. Derek and his crew were incredibly calm throughout the entire build process. Now, yeah, we did have an all-nighter there at the end, but we got the cars done with over two days to spare, before SEMA, and in the process, we got something I didn't bargain for at all. Enough time to put the cars out on a design patio and just kind of take in our work, inspect it, before the truck came, took the cars to Vegas for all the world to see. <laughs>